TV here with Fitbully TV. Listen, people, we lost the dog. Now, oh man, I don't know how uh, informed you guys are about Darwin's theory, the strong survive, etc. Buddy of mine hasn't had his first litter yet, but he said, You got me scared because you said you knew. I knew about the challenges we would have with this particular female due to my understanding of dominant and recessive genes. And this is just merely off of her color. Now this really means nothing, but to me it means everything. And let me explain. This girl come from a black dog and a red dog and all the puppies in the litter were black and white. She was the only blue dog. Blocky Head took on a lot of the look of both parents and the best of them. But here's the problem. From a pheno standpoint, while I'm looking at the female and her being what we call unique, oh, she's different. She carries the good, the bad, the ugly, and the hideous, to say the least. And we had a total of six dogs in this litter. And we ended up now with two left. Three dogs came out with cleft lips and cleft. Two dogs had cleft lips and cleft palates, and one dog had a cleft lip, I believe. And we put that video up of the doctor breaking down the challenges you have long term because the dogs and the puppies, for that matter, at that stage, literally cannot nurse on their own or feed themselves. And then, beyond a reasonable doubt, for a fact, have to have a surgery roughly at six months old. So you're looking at a terrible quality life with all types of issues long term and nobody wants that for their dogs let alone themselves now here's the other challenge someone said would ask why then would you breed that dog i text one of my mentors and i talk to him almost every day regularly to say the least and i bred the dog because she is a great dog but if i had the tools or information for instance there is he said it's the Nova Scotia water dog is the only dog that has a protein marker for cleft palates. Well, the bulldog is very commonly known to have cleft palates at times. The French bulldog can have cleft palates, cleft lips, no protein marker. If you're not familiar with what a protein marker is, what does protein do? Protein is a building block. It builds. It builds. It's what makes us who we are in a sense. African Americans have a protein marker for sickle cell because we're the only people who get sickle cell anemia. There are different protein markers for various groups because they might carry a specific disease, if you would, that others don't. And when you get two people together and they can basically run the blood and do some samples, they could say, oh, you guys might not want to breed, you know, for layman's terms, or for that matter, have kids because you carry two copies of this, which be, could potentially, high risk, run that. And then there's this other thing that we leave out, but we bet on. And it's sometimes you got to bet on God and hope for the best. But had I been given the opportunity, to be clear, to get the information to prevent the things that we're dealing with currently from happening, that being cleft palate, cleft lip, I would have done my research and used every resource possible to avoid this type of loss or these issues or any suffering on kennel partners, myself included. But as I repeat, this is an opportunity to educate, inform, and work through problems while empowering those watching and learning to do more, do better, and really be cautious, careful, and thoughtful about the dogs you take your dogs to. Now I took this female who I knew carried, I believed, I didn't know. I know now for sure. Well, it's not fact actually, but who I believed to carry some issues to a very healthy dog. Very, very, very healthy dog. And uh, I'll be very clear in saying she's not that healthy. Her history, AKA her pedigrees, are that written in exotic. The irony is, is she come out wide and this particular breeding wasn't even an exotic breeding. It was a bully breeding. But these people, no disrespect to them because they're getting their money and they're doing their thing. What are they doing? They're breeding to their liking and for their liking. And we live in an exotic time. I breed for health. 
and so many other things, this female has a lot of good, what we call bone, head, and mass. So I wanted to pull the good things out of her. So if we look at Darwin's theory, what is it that it says? Well, there's a couple of different ones. It basically says only the strong survive, um, natural selection, and a bunch of other things. And in this case, natural selection, unfortunately, along with the strongest being the ones that survive, did its own thing. And here we are now left with two dogs, a boy and a female, who are at this moment in time very vivacious, extremely alive and well, and they're doing great. They're night and day compared to the female that we unfortunately just lost. So bear with me, bear with us as we walk you again through our processes of whelping, the things we're learning about breeding, checking pedigrees, and, and you know, apply some of this information to better in your program, how you handle your dogs, how you do things moving forward. And if you have questions and comments, please do leave them, share them, send me a message, hit me up on Instagram so that I can continue to work through some of your problems so I can better my own house, if you would. Don't forget to subscribe. T-Fit, Fit Bully TV, signing off.